Tonight on News 5 Live, a mother and her baby and her children are badly shaken after gunmen stormed their home looking for someone else. The Public Service Union expresses concern over the politicizing of top posts. And Barranco villagers want to be part of the logging industry. Details of these stories and more coming up in tonight's newscast. strong as our families, businesses, institutions, and the communities that surround us. Then by giving businesses the power to grow, entrepreneurs the ability to expand, and by giving our families the right to own something, the Belize Bank gives you the power to build a nation, our nation. Together. The Belize Bank. Our country. Your bank. It's a fact that you can access unlimited services with Smart. Tired of being measured or cut off when you need to be connected? It's a fact that when you sign up for Smart's Plus Plan, you get unlimited talk, text, and unlimited data. And it's a fact that you can sign up with your group of up to five members for Smart's Share Plans and up to 40 members for Smart's Enterprise Plans for unlimited talk, text, and data. Smart has the true, true unlimited plans. That's a fact. Be smart and live smart. Research on the impact of COVID-19 infection on pregnant women is limited. Right now, pregnant women are at higher risk of severe illness than the general population. Pregnancy can affect the way a woman's body handles respiratory infections. If you are pregnant, protect yourself against COVID-19. Wash hands frequently using soap and water for at least 40 seconds. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizer if soap and water are not available. Cover cough or sneeze with tissue and throw used tissue in a bin. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces such as doorknobs, counters, phones, and tablets. Practice physical distancing. Work from home if possible. Avoid contact with anyone who has fever, cough, and cold or flu-like symptoms. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth without first washing your hands with soap and water. If you have fever, cough, and feel extra tired, Call 0800-MOH-CARE. Help keep Belize safe. is brought to you by the Belize Bank Limited. Five Live for Thursday, February 18th. I am Marlene Cuellar. Belize's COVID numbers seem to be declining, but we are still in the middle of, a coro of the coronavirus pandemic. Viewers are naturally concerned about widespread reports that the substantive Director of Health Services, Dr. Marvin Manzanero, is being forced out of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Dr. Manza has been the face in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic for the better part of 2020 under the Barrow administration. But just after the elections, he himself contracted COVID-19 and had to be hospitalized. Within days, an acting DHS was appointed in the person of Dr. Melissa Diaz-Musa. 
But since Monday of this week, Dr. Manzanero has been back at work, but has found himself without a desk, without a vehicle, and we're told he's actually sitting in the secretarial area of the office. So was he demoted? The Association of Public Service Senior Managers, for which Dr. Manzanero is a member, says that as far as they're concerned, there is only one DHS, and that position is presently held by Dr. Manza, who has not indicated that he's resigning. Today, President Sharon Fraser says that the career epidemiologist and senior public officer is being disrespected. I was informed by him that on returning to work, he returned to no office. Nobody spoke to him. Nobody had any discussion with him as to what would have happened to him. As the, the position is, if it is that he was not able or they did not want him, or whatever reason it would, there is still a process that needed to have been followed as it relates to him as the substantive holder of the position of Director of Health Services. That's one thing. The second thing is that you cannot have an acting Director of Health Services when there is a substantive holder of the position. For audit purposes, how would they be able to explain paying two people to be functioning as Director of Health Services? So, from, so I'm looking at it from all perspective here. Um, in addition to that, the only way that you can move a permanent, a pole of a permanent post would be, one, if he has conducted some misconduct, two, if he has been promoted, and the only promotion that exists for an HOD would be maybe CEO, because you're at the top of the department. So putting him anywhere else unless it's an equivalent HOD position is a demotion. So it doesn't matter if he is getting the same pay based on the structure of the public service it would mean that he would be demoted anywhere else he goes. So what's the appointment of Dr. Melissa Musa Diaz as the acting DHS in accordance with public service procedures. President Sharon Fraser says that they've been monitoring the situation as two deputy directors of health services have been bypassed. The only concern I had was how could there be appointed an acting director of health service when in fact that appointment had to have come from the Public Service Commission and at the time I know for a fact that the Public Service Commission was not working. Not questioning her ability, not, not, not saying that in fact she's not a warrior. Um, I, I, I'm familiar with her, I know she's hardworking. But the next question that came to my mind was that there were two deputy Director Health Services, um, Dr. Murray, I think, and the, the administrative nurse, the, the person in charge of nursing, so two deputy um, DHS was there. And so my other question was what happened to them? Because in terms of policies and, 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 and how the public service work would be if the substantive holder is not there, if there are deputies, those are the persons who are put in that position. Um, that is the procedure. That is the way that, in fact, things happen. But what does the public service union have to say about it? Well, News 5 has confirmed that Dr. Manzanero is not a member of the PSU. First Vice President Dean Flowers says that the union does have cause for concern, especially where it appears senior positions held by public officers are becoming politicized. Flowers says when this happens, 
It disenfranchises career civil servants, many of whom spend years preparing themselves for leadership roles. From a public service union standpoint, um, the concern uh, the concern is, is is in line with exactly uh, how you frame your question, Green, which is that um, by the government moving senior positions from 106 to 107, and we're only aware, of course, to date of one position that has by which they've gone that route, and that is, of course, the control of customs. Uh, it raises concerns for the Public Service Union and its members who are qualifying themselves and are dedicating themselves to the service with the hope of one day uh, elevating to the top uh, position within the different ministries and departments. So, um, politicizing, because uh, converting these positions to a 107 appointment is, po is politicizing these appointments. And it disenfranchises uh, uh, career public officers and it also um, discourages uh, career public officers. Flower says that the union is also concerned about the impact this can have on the proper management of government departments. When someone is holding a position by virtue of attrition, having matriculated into that position, um, that person at times have an appreciation for, for the quality of service that needs to be delivered and for the treatment that is, that is rendered to those uh, uh, beneath them. But when somebody is politically appointed, uh, nominated by the Prime Minister and, of course, appointed by the Governor General, then that person, uh, it, is, it, it, it is our view that that person does not have the same kind of appreciation for the job and for the service in and of itself. And what has the Minister of Health, Michelle Shabbat, said about Dr. Manzanero? As recently as December of 2020, while Dr. Manzanero was on sick leave battling COVID-19, the minister spoke about the trained epidemiologist during an appearance on Channel 5's Open Your Eyes' morning show. We are not going gonna to throw the, the, the experience and the knowledge um, that he has. We're not going to throw that away. Actually, we look forward to his full recovery and for his reincorporation into the Ministry of Health and Wellness. And we do expect that he's going to be part of this team, um, helping to advise and to lead the country um, around, uh, along the correct path. Coming up after the break, gunmen get the wrong house in Ladyville. And a visual artist goes virtual. These stories and more coming up next on News 5 Live. Digi y el Banco Nacional de Belice se enorgullecen de asociarse con el gobierno de Belice para facilitar el desembolso de los fondos de la transferencia de efectivo COVID-19 de Belice a través de nuestra plataforma segura y fácil de usar Mobile Pays. Después de obtener The contamination of water we all depend on is a very urgent issue. As Belize's popularity and industries grow, challenges increase. In this episode, we will examine the issue of water pollution in Belize. Water pollution is the contamination of water bodies, usually because of human activities. Water bodies include lagoons, rivers, aquifers, and oceans. On the marine side, the discharge of sewage and bilge water from cruise ships and other live-aboard vessels, in combination with unregulated development of coastal areas, has led to the degradation of marine ecosystems such as mangroves and coral reefs. Our inland waters are facing their own challenges. As agricultural development increases, 
Pesticides, fertilizers, and waste products are running off into rivers. Increased river traffic from boat tours and sugar barges adds to the already stressful conditions of the freshwater ecosystems. In addition, companies that collect sewage sometimes dump the waste right into the waterways. Additionally, in densely populated areas like Belize City and Orange Walk, poor sewage designs result in the contamination of groundwater and of water bodies by both sewage and wash water. In many cases, homes and businesses dump their wastewater directly into drains, which leads to rivers and the sea. Wastewater, detergents and petroleum collect in drains that empty into waterways, such as the New River and the Belize River. This, along with the runoff and discharges from the agricultural and industrial businesses, have been inadequately monitored and enforced. The answers to overcoming water pollution issues are fourfold. Improved infrastructure, adequate treatment, increased legislation and monitoring, and of course, changing our habits for the better. While it is urgent that better management on a policy level is needed, there are a few things we can do at home to help. Ensure proper treatment systems are installed for all wastewater at your home and business. Don't dispose of oil from your automobiles or cooking and household detergents down the drain. And lastly, minimize the usage of chemicals and fertilizers and report any dumping into waterways to the Department of the Environment. The government has recognized the threat of inadequate liquid waste management and is working toward goals of reducing and reversing its effects. For more information on what's being done about water pollution and ways you can help, visit our website at doe.gov.bz. I'm Alison Castillo, and now you know. Imagine you're just going about your business at home on a normal afternoon when suddenly armed men are at your door. That is exactly what happened to one family in the Belize district on Wednesday. Although it turned out the men were at the wrong house. Today the gunmen are still at large and a mother and children are trying to recover from the shock. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. A Ladyville family that has lost a number of relatives to gun violence in the past suffered another traumatic experience on Wednesday afternoon. While no one was murdered, a mother and her children were the victims of a home invasion, all the more brazen since that occurred in close proximity to the police station. Today, the family was too distraught to give an interview and were visibly shaken up as during the incident, they were held at gunpoint. The village chairman gave us some details of what transpired. Chairman Bernardo Bennett says that recently there has been an increase in property crimes in the village and they are working with the police to ensure citizen security. Dwayne Moody for News 5. To help overcome disruptions to the delivery of health care during COVID-19, district health educators are getting a technology boost this week. Nine senior officers from the Health Education and Community Participation Bureau, HECOPAB, are being equipped with laptops, 
cases and projectors for use during training sessions with community health workers. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, this enhanced instruction covers all six districts and focuses on COVID-19 prevention and control and non-communicable diseases and chronic conditions that may cause increased vulnerability during the pandemic. PAHO WHO Technical Advisor Dr. Jorge Palanco handed over the donated items to Dr. Javier Zuniga and Kathleen Cho on behalf of Dr. Diaz Musa and the Ministry of Health and Wellness. He was born Ivor Ventura, but over the past two years, Belizean Punta rap artist Darius McVeigh has been taking the music scene by storm. Due to the pandemic, however, McVeigh had to get creative with launching his music, so he registered with an international association. He's been collecting royalties on his music, which can be found on iTunes and can be streamed on over 50 platforms. He told News 5 today that his music is a fusion that pays homage to his Garifuna cultural heritage. I stand behind um, this new creation called Punta Rap. Punta Rap, you know, like uh, a mixture when it comes to like the lyrical content, a mixture of dancehall and, and rap music put on an Afrobeat or a Punta Rap fusion, you know, and that, that is what I set up to be. I just want to create something where not only we um, native people go relate and listen to In today's time, um, music can be, you can make money from from art, from putting your music in streaming. different storms, uh, in the, uh, different streaming platforms. Um, uh, but you need to be a registered registered musician. You know, you need to um, join a, a association that that can actually register uh, register your music and monitor your music online. So on each place that I get on YouTube or any other um, platforms, I receive uh, a compensation for it. There's my bid um, wants to to represent his culture culture out. Uh, out on the on the international platform, and not only to to get the um, not only to wave the flag on the biggest platform, but also to to show the people that we can demand our respect through through this music thing. Back in November, we told you about Belize City Southside residents' need for a new home. Merlene King, who lives on Jones Street in a dilapidated structure, was having a tough time staying safe and dry during the floods in the city. King shared with News 5 that she was unable to provide for her meals, and so it was next to impossible to repair her home. Her cry for help caught the ears of several donors, who came together to give her a brand new home today. News 5 was on hand for the handing over of the $24,000 home. I thank Mr. Sadi for making me put me on the news so I can get this, this help. And I thank the mayor, Mr. Bernard Wagner. And I thank my, my cousin too, Mr. Cordell, me give me all the assistance to my cousin Cordell Hyde. And everybody will help me. I say thanks for everything when they do for me. And God knows I don't believe I'm living in a nice, pretty house like this. And I thank for everybody who help up me to make her get this good house. Plenty different because I never have a refrigerator. My house, my old and thing, but I used to get it clean. I never go to a bathroom. I have to use bucket to go to the canal. And I'm thankful now because I've got a sewage that I could use now. I never got water. I used to get water by my neighbor and pay by the month. So a lot of things I'm thankful for what happened for me. The sheer deplorable conditions that um, she was living in, um, I never see it fit for any human being and um, I had to, 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 to try to mobilize to get um, some, some measure of resource to assist this lady. Isani actually was the person who reported on Miss King and, and so I tell my team, get in touch with Isani, we could find out where this lady lives and, and, and how we could help. And, and um, Isani gave us all the information we came and, and saw the home and immediately 
without getting any help yet, I, I told my team, we have moved Miss King out of the house um, and we rented an apartment for her um, in the Leakai area for three months. And then I got on the phone, called my good friend um, Greg Mejia from Atlantic, I called the Taiwanese ambassador, I called ICB, and everybody was quickly on board with it. Coming up after the break, don't expect to get to bed early on the night of municipal elections. We have details of why the counting might take a while. Stay with us. Start your year with a win with Bellikin and its new promotion, Papa Stopper. Yes, sir. Every time you pop one stopper off our Bellikin, make sure you check under the crown. If you see one battleship, you win one free Bellikin. If you see one ball, you win $20. If you see one star, you win $100. And once you see one diamond, you win $1,000. Sure. Bellikin again, you know. Papa Stopper. When you pop a stopper off a Bellikin, check to see if you're a winner. You can collect your free beer or $20 cash prize at the store nearest to you. If you win $100 or $1,000, redeem your prize at the nearest BNB sales center. Promotion is valid until Saturday, March 27th, or while supplies last. Pop a stopper! Bellikin, the beer of Belize. Jackpot is now all the way up to $671,341. You don't want to miss your chance to win it all. Get your Mega Bingo tickets for the next show airing on Channel 5, Wave Radio, and Radio Bahia this Saturday, February 20th, starting at 8 p.m. You can also catch the show on Facebook and YouTube. Simply log in and search for Belize Mega Bingo and you can play the game live. So make sure you tune in and you can be the next Jockpot winner. All that cash can change your life and the Jockpot is waiting. Mega Bingo is the game. What a beautiful morning in Popsville. Time to check the crops. Uh-oh, the insects are back. Farmer Ricky plans to double his dosage to get rid of these pests once and for all. Oh no, no more insecticide. Well, off to the store we go. Hey, it's good old Joe. Good morning, Joe. I'd like to get four bottles of Compound V, please. I'm double dosing to fight back the insects. Compound V, you said? It doesn't sound familiar. Let me see what you have. Ricky, where did you get this product? It doesn't have proper label information and could be filled with highly hazardous chemicals called persistent organic pollutants. You should really get one that's pops free, which is safer and approved for pest control. Ricky, it's time we talked about the dangers of misusing highly toxic pesticides. Some pesticides contain highly hazardous ingredients that can harm you and your loved ones if handled incorrectly. So when we improperly store pesticides, it can affect our health in the long and short term. To be safe, make sure to remember these following tips to avoid unnecessary chemical exposure. It's important to always read your label fully before using any treatment on your crops. To avoid dangerous contact with pesticides, including airborne insecticides, make sure to wear appropriate personal protective equipment. Apply the recommended chemical dosage and use far away from human contact and from active winds. 
To avoid cross-contamination, make sure to follow these simple steps to dispose of pesticide containers. And no matter what you do, don't throw it in any old waste bin. Always make sure to triple rinse, puncture, and store separately for proper disposal. And for an even safer approach to pesticide use, consider switching to organic farming and other integrated pest management processes. For more information on how to dispose of hazardous pesticides, contact your local waste management agency or visit StopThePops.com for more details. Sometimes danger lurks where you least expect it. The more you know, the healthier you can grow. Digi y el Banco Nacional de Belice se enorgullecen de asociarse con el gobierno de Belice para fácil el desembolso de los fondos de la transferencia de efectivo COVID-19 de Belice a través de nuestra plataforma segura y fácil de usar MobilePays. Después de obtener la aprobación como beneficiario de los fondos de ayuda, se le informará por SMS cuando su pago mensual haya sido depositado en su cuenta de MobilePays, a qué tienda Digi o sucursal de Banco Nacional se le asignó y cuándo puede ir a cobrar. Debe traer consigo el teléfono al que se le envió la notificación para presentar su número de cuenta y para recibir su código de validación y recibo. También debe traer su tarjeta de seguro social válida. Después de que su información sea verificada, recibirá un código de validación que deberá dar a la gente. El agente le entregará el monto total de los fondos asignados para ese mes y usted recibirá un recibo vía SMS con un número único de transacción. Digi y el Banco Nacional de Belice están comprometidos con el desarrollo de servicios innovadores en beneficio de todos los belicenios. Today in Balmapan, the Ministry of the Public Service, Constitutional and Political Reform signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the Implementation of Good Governance, Transparency and Ethics Curriculum. Those on hand for the handing over spoke about the need to strengthen links between those in the public service and other agencies and civil society organizations to combat corruption and foster good governance practices. The Ministry respects and believes fervently in the rule of law, accountability, and transparency, and is committed to a government that is legitimate, effective, and delivering for all Belizeans, while building a respectful, strong, and mutually beneficial partnership with our social partners. Keeping this in mind, we come with the objective to strengthen the bonds with civil society organizations and develop public officers' knowledge and skills to build a culture of good governance in any nation, we need to raise public awareness and empower existing anti-corruption agencies and other institutions to ensure that resources allocated for the people are used for that purpose. Fostering citizen security and promoting good governance are two of the primary objectives of, for the United States' partnership with the government and people of Belize. The idea for this project came to me while listening to the testimony of a public service officer during the infamous passport scandal Senate inquiry. When asked about her participation in these unethical transactions, she said, I did it because my supervisor asked me to. That statement resonated with me. The entire scenario resonated with me. The question of whether she really didn't know that she could refuse such a request was something that bothered me, and that is what has influenced the develop of this training manual that is being gifted to the Ministry of Public Service, Constitutional and Political Reform today. The training manual and other materials were developed with grant funding. It is a joint initiative between the Love Foundation and the Ministry of the Public Service, Constitutional and Political Reform with support from the U.S. Embassy in Belize. As viewers prepare for the municipal elections countrywide on March 3rd, electors in Corozal Bay will also be casting their ballots in the divisions by election. Chief Elections Officer Josephine Tamai explains where those electors can go to cast both ballots and how the Elections and Boundaries Department will ensure no one is double-dipping in the ink 
or voting where they're not eligible. For Corozal Bay, we have polling area 39 and polling area 40. Those are the two polling areas that will be going, um, will be having ele double elections, right? So we have 18, a total of 18, poll 18 polling stations in those areas. Um, counting for Corozal Bay will be at the St. Francis Xavier RC School. When it comes to the municipal election now, um, we have counting being conducted at the Corozal Community College because in that area, um, we need to ensure that it is safe for everybody. But when it comes to the process itself on that day, so all persons who are registered, who is a registered elector for Corozal Bay, those persons are eligible to vote in the municipal elections. Those persons will join one line. So when you reach the polling station, you will have one line. In that line now, those persons will first vote for municipal elections. So when you go in, um, you will be sanitized, you will be identified, um, the name will be marked off the voters list, the person bill will be required to show his or her um, rights index finger to ensure that they have not voted before. I will tell you that um, we will use two different color inks and two different fingers for the dipping to know exactly who have voted for the by-election and who have voted for the municipal election. The by-election in Corozal Bay became necessary after the PUP candidate in that division, David Vega, won his seat on November 11th but died exactly a month later before he could even be sworn into office. His wife, Elvia Vega, has stepped up to... His sister, Elvia Vega, has stepped up to contest the by-election. She is running against Hilberto Campos of the United Democratic Party. News 5 asked the chief elections officer when our viewers might expect to see results on the night of March 3rd. She says, do not expect the, result, the results to be too early. Most definitely it will take a bit longer because um, we know that even for, an, for, a, for one ballot paper, you can have split votes. And that is where the counting takes a little bit longer, right? Um, so I can tell you, um, I'm not promising that we'll have results before midnight this time around. Um, definitely not for all municipalities. We have some that are much smaller than others, for example, in Punta Gorda. Punta Gorda um, is very small, so we expect that we would get results um, a bit earlier than the others. For example, Belize City, we know Belize City usually takes a very, very, very long time. So we're looking into um, maybe 2 o'clock or 3 the following morning um, for results for Belize City. So it will vary depending on the size. Coming up, Mahogany Chocolate is sending sweet treats abroad. Details of how this southern company is breaking into the U.S. confectionery market. When we Are you traveling? Effective January 26, all passengers traveling internationally will need to get tested no more than three days before you travel to the United States. And show your negative result to the airline before you board your flight. Here at Caring Hands Clinic in San Pedro, we administer the antigen test, frequently referred to as a rapid test. Our products are CDC compliant and FDA approved. Testing has never been this easy. With our highly certified and licensed medical staff, we provide you with an accurate test result in minutes, making your experience fast, safe, and easy. To book your appointments today, contact us on any of our hotlines at 671-TEST or 672-TEST. 226 fast or our Vonage line at 305 420 6203. Book your appointments online at www.belizecovidtest.com. Caring Hands Clinic Antigen Test Center. We're pleased to serve you. Currently, we're using Smart Elite Vibe Calling Plan. We use it interbranch. We use it to call outside and we also use it to call internationally. It's far cheaper than what we used to have before. Our equipment, our new PBX box is new. So the PBX is very good because I can call to my Saturday branch, I can call to my Kikaka branch, 
I can call to San Pedro branch and there's no cost using the PBS. Actually right now, since we're in different locations, I can call main office from where I am at a no cost using the PBX system. I would recommend it, sure I would, especially the big enterprises who has a lot of employees. There's a lot of reduction in costs, 50% of saving. But that on a year, it's a lot of money that we're saving. Money that we could return to our members since we give back dividend to our members. Visit our showroom or call 670-6710 to find out how Smart's corporate plan and PBX systems can benefit your business. Consultation is free. Love is a connection that should last forever. This February, NextGen is sharing the love with amazing promo deals for everyone. Reconnect or install with NextGen for free. Sign up for our affordable cable and high-speed internet plans and get one month free on your acquired service. But that's not all. New and reconnecting customers can now receive one month free MyTV subscription when you sign up with us anytime in February. Some restrictions apply. For more information on our promotions and services, contact us at 0800-222-5388 or via our social media platforms. NextGen, powered by Central TV and Internet. Es un hecho que puedes obtener servicios ilimitados con Smart. ¿Cansado de que se corte la línea cuando más necesitas estar conectado? Es un hecho que cuando te suscribes al plan de Smart Plus, obtienes llamadas, textos y datos ilimitados. Y también es un hecho que te puedes suscribir con un grupo de 5 miembros al plan Smart Share y hasta 40 miembros al plan Smart Enterprise para llamadas, textos y datos ilimitados. Smart tiene los verdaderos planes ilimitados. Es un hecho. Sé Smart y vive de forma Smart. Tonight we have a story about the sweet success of one of Belize's chocolatiers. Mahogany Chocolate Limited is a bean-to-bar chocolate manufacturer which relaunched its packaging today. This morning they had a relaunch of the brand new packaging and they also introduced their new product Chocol Ha, a ready mix drink. One of the first thing we did was to decrease the size of our chocolate bar from 90 grams to 80 grams while maintaining the dimension of the bar. Uh, this translated into thinning the size of the chocolate bar. Then it, we also looked at the packaging. We improved and enhanced the packaging such that it's more consumer friendly. We, we know that, especially in the dark chocolate and, and range, a lot of our consumers could not necessarily consume the entire chocolate bar. So with the new packaging, it gives them an opportunity to consume um, piecemeal and they can also insert back whatever they don't consume into the wrapper for consumption at a later time. And all of that was factored and incorporated into our new packaging. Another thing that we did is we color coded the different percentages of our chocolate bar. And, and so now we have five color coded chocolate by percentage under our Belizean brand. And as the brand relaunched its packaging, they also, they're also celebrating the shipment of 50,000 chocolate products to the United States. According to Luis Choco, they are entering a competitive market, but he believes this Belizean brand will please the most discriminating palates. This week also marks a major milestone for Mahogany Chocolate Belize. Because just two days ago, we loaded, and now uh, the, that container is setting sail for a client in the U.S. So, one container of chocolate bar. Wow, that's 50,000 chocolate bars you've exported. Yeah, chocolate products, that include chocolate bar, um, chocolate powder, ready mix, 
and, and cacao powder. Luis, are you able to share what's the value of that shipment that you were able to get out of Belize? Yeah, so that value is about uh, 75,000 US dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. And that goes to which part of the US? So it's going towards in the west, west coast and in, in Washington. It's highly competitive, especially in the marketplace that we're venturing into. There is over 300 craft chocolate makers in the U.S. alone that are similarly doing the chocolate products, uh, chocolate powder. But uh, we also have a story. We work in heart. We are, we are socially responsible. And then we also have, have to find the right distribution network. We also have to work harder in ensuring that our chocolate products are available. They watch the lumber leaving the area, but they want the benefits to stay in the village. Barranco villagers speak out. That's coming up next. In response to COVID-19, the government of Belize has implemented strict guidelines on persons to practice social distancing to reduce the spread and risk of getting COVID-19. Practicing social distancing is when one maintains a greater than usual distance away from another person. In public health, it is a practice to prevent sick persons from coming in close contact with healthy people. Recent studies are showing that social distance of 3 feet or more decreases the exposure of COVID-19. Before these restrictions, a person with COVID-19 could infect 2.5 persons in 5 days, 406 persons in 30 days. When you put into practice measures to reduce the exposure activities by half of that one infected person, in five days you would possibly only infect 1.25, 30 days, 15 persons. Reduce the exposure of that infected person by 75%, in five days you infect 0.625, in 30 days, 2.5 persons. Remember, the virus does not move on its own, people move it. The more space between you and others, the harder it is for the virus to spread. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. In partnership with the British High Commission. Hola Tony. Hey Kevin, ¿qué onda? ¿Qué pasa? Nada, le vine a buscar porque necesito comprar más mercancías de vasos y platos desechables para mi tienda de comestible. Me estoy quedando sin esas cosas. No hombre, fíjate que desde el 15 de abril no puedo importar nada de eso. Y se me acaba de terminar todo lo que tenía hace como tres semanas. Oye, pero nunca has estado sin esas cosas. ¿Qué está pasando? Mira esto. Esta es la nueva ley que prohíbe todo el uso de plásticos no reutilizables. Esos son vasos, platos, cucharas, tenedores, todo eso. Desde 15 de abril de este año, no he podido importar nada de eso. A partir del 15 de enero del 2021, nadie puede fabricarlo. 15 de abril 2021, nadie lo puede vender. Y a partir del 14 de julio del 2021, si alguien te agarra con eso, te multan. Híjole, no sabía eso. Necesito cambiar algunas cosas. Les diré a mis clientes por qué esas cosas ya no están disponibles. Gracias, Antonio. Así es, cuídate. As one of the largest cable and internet providers in Belize, CBC strives to provide our customers with the highest standards of quality, value, and service in all aspects of cable TV and internet. Monitoring our systems closely, our technicians combine creative planning and state-of-the-art technology with years of experience and training to develop and provide the most reliable and advanced cable and internet service to exceed your expectations. For CBC and our team of talented engineers, technicians and customer service representatives, delivering less than the very best is never an option. Barranco is the southernmost coastal village in Belize. Its name is often synonymous with two of Belize's greatest musical artists, Andy Palacio and Paul Nabor, born and raised there. 
But the 150 people who live here now, are, who live there, aren't musicians. Instead, they want access to logging permits and a foothold in Belize's logging industry. News 5's Andrea Palanco was in Barranco when the villagers met with the new minister who might just be able to help them help themselves. A quick walkthrough of the village of Barranco transports you back decades. Without much economic activity, villagers largely depend on fishing, small-scale farming, and family remittances from abroad to sustain themselves. This once vibrant and colorful community feels forgotten. Well, my first observation getting in was that uh, the village proper needs a lot of help uh, in terms of development. The infrastructure is poor. Uh, there's clearly a need for more presence from the government and other in uh, government institutions. Yet, this community is not poor in resources. Literally, in its own backyard, a multi-million dollar industry is booming. Trees are being cut down and turned into logs. But these resources don't stay in the village, nor does the village benefit from the profits being extracted. In fact, Barranco residents say the village council is never consulted. They also claim that most of the local applications for logging permits are rejected, while those from the outside get approved. Recently, the village council called for a meeting with Minister Orlando Habet of the Ministry of Sustainable Development. Dr. Francis Arzu of the Barranco Village Council did not mince words. I had mentioned to the minister, is it possible for the government of Belize to put legislation in place so that no logs leave the Toledo district, that what leaves the Toledo district is the finished product? You know how many people will get employed and how many people will benefit and how much money will stay in the, in, in the Toledo district? Last year, only four villagers received permits. It's not a new problem, and this is not the first time villagers are speaking out. In 2018, a group traveled to Belmapan to demonstrate against what they characterize as an injustice. Leslie Colon summed up the problem. We look on this as an economic source for make we could develop ourselves. That's true. You know, because the government not reach out to we. You know, they don't try to provide ways and means how we could. So we, we try, amongst ourselves as people, we try to develop ourselves. We take like for years, over 20 years now, then they lag way out and no benefit for the community. We say the community, they take lick if we roads bad. We, you know, as Mr. Fab mentioned, the wharf, then placed in a, in a shambles, man. And we still know they say, we still know they get nothing. The lags and they go out. We need for benefit. But that public outcry didn't change much, and so now villagers hope that this latest meeting with Minister Orlando Habet will be the catalyst for change. Habet says the approach will indeed be different under his watch. We have to look closely at the issue and area of sustainable development because we need to have everything done in a sustainable fashion, and forestry is one of them. Giving logging concessions um, is purely extraction. So the new policy of the forestry department now and my ministry is that there has to be some type of reforestation. And when logging concessions and permits are given, we have noticed that most of the benefits go out of the area where this logging uh, happens and very little, if any, stays in those communities. Point in case, Barranco. The request that they are making is that why take out the raw material not give anything back and from their point of view even if they don't manage and get the entire uh, use of the resource at least getting something back but something substantial and the idea floated around and i think it's a very good idea that whichever company comes in to get to do the logging why don't you build a sawmill there why don't you build a furniture factory there so that employment can happen within the same village where the extraction is taking place? And certainly my ministry and I will be communicating with the department and bringing it uh, to our cabinet so that we can see that favorably so that we can assist villages like Barranco to get 
what they actually not only need, but what they deserve. We just want that we be respected. We just want that uh, we take ownership. We just want that we too here, the humble people of the village, be given uh, the, uh, the permission to lag and be the ones who begin taking the forefront. Of course, keeping sustainability in mind. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco. The Village Council presented Habet and CEO Dr. Kenrick Williams with a draft of a position paper that outlines the way they want to see how natural resources are used from land to the sea to sustain the livelihoods of the people of Barranco. And that's the news. Tonight's broadcast is available in both text and streaming video at channel5bleeze.com. You can also connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news5live. I'm Marlene Cuellar, thanks for joining us, and from all of us here at News 5, please remember to wash your hands, keep your social distance, and stay safe. Good night.